as you could, uh, as you could uh, ascertain from the lecture, um, the, the whole question of uh, secularization um, uh, is a rather complex one. If there's a story to be told about this lecture is that uh, uh, the processes uh, ought not to be understood in a simple linear way from a, a kind of primitive uh, embrace of religion to the light of reason shining into the dark corners of, um, of religious minds and dispelling it, uh, and therefore a progress being identified with uh, secularization. But rather, the story to be told is much more a uh, complex one. Uh, various versions of it uh, you have uh, read um, in um, in, uh, in the assigned readings and some attempt at explaining how do we understand modernity, you could also find in Charles Taylor's piece Al to uh, Alternative Modernities. I realized that this was probably the most difficult uh, text uh, uh, to, to read um, uh, because it was conceptually too, um, I suppose, most, most demanding. Uh, but I think it's also a very useful uh, text because it explains precisely why the story of modernization is not the one, as Charles Taylor uh, later said, and as uh, Jose has mentioned uh, here as well, one of subtraction, uh, but rather has to be told in a very different, different way. Uh, I wanted to uh, maybe start our discussion uh, with, uh, with, with two questions of uh, Jose that, that, that may, um, uh, th that are significant, I think, for our course, that are interesting uh, to me, uh, that maybe may uh, suggest some trajectories of our discussion. But you feel free to take it where you where you want to take it, and kind of puzzles that you uh, that you have about reading materials as well as the lecture, you can you can voice them uh, certainly freely. Um, two issues that I thought were were, were interesting, or three actually issues. I think it's important to probe a little bit more. Uh, the question of multiple modernities. Right? That's one of the, the central issues, right? If the old thesis counts, right, if, if, if it's persuasive from primitive religiosity to, uh, to, to kind of uh, erasure of this religious superstructure, and then you have something like generic humanity that remains, and that's the story of modernization, that's the one kind of a story. But a different kind of story might be, well, there are multiple ways to modernize, and you can be modern and secular, you could be modern as variously religious. Now that will give you a very much a different account of what's happening in the world, that will give you a different account of the relationship between faiths and globalization processes. That's very much central to, uh, to the things that we are going to be doing in this course. And I realize that maybe there's no single um, um, generally recognized answer to this question. Um, people like Taylor, people like uh, uh, um, uh, Professor Casanova advocate one position, there are other alternative ones, but it's very important for us to name this and discuss it uh, more, have clarity uh, on this. Uh, the other thing is, um, I think we talk about resurgence of religion or religions continuing to be alive. <laughs> And it would be interesting now to, to examine a bit, well, what does that really mean, right? Religions are alive as what? <laughs> um, or uh, how do we go about measuring this so that it's not just an impression that we get because media will descend, 300 uh, media outlets are going to descend to Greensville uh, to film what's going to happen uh, in the community of 50. Right, and then somehow religion is alive, right? <laughs> it's alive because it's a particular egregious case uh, with significant implica uh, global implications. But that's a different comment than saying that religions uh, broadly construed are alive. So maybe, maybe a comment on how do, we, how do we measure this? How do we, what are the indicators of religions being alive? Uh, and, uh, just a general question about this presence of religion, religions, um, vibrancy for individual, uh, individual uh, um, believers uh, as well as kind of deep privatization or religion not being private. And that brings me to, to another question that I think is also very significant for our, uh, for our course. Um, and that's the question of is it as it seemed to be the case? Is it true that 
religions are not just simply alive, if it's true, <laughs> but that they also are increasingly, or at least that they're unwilling to remain kind of privatized, hidden in the privacy of worshippers' heart or of communities, but somehow are engaged in the public realm. And the, one of the indicators, for instance, that, 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 that might be of that is um, the emergence of something that's called engaged Buddhism. So that you have a religion which, uh, on the classical division between prophetic religions which receive the message of God to transform the world and mystical religions which are more associated with the flight of the soul in the unity with the divine, so that even Buddhism, who tended to be classed as a mystical religion, now is understood and practiced uh, as an engaged uh, religion. That is, somehow, relevance of religion for everyday life uh, is, is reaffirmed by, by, by most of the religions. If that's the case, that has implications in terms of how one sees the relationship between globalization processes uh, and, uh, and uh, religious communities.